In this section, I'm going to go through one example, which may not sound like a lot, but it has many parts and it hits on everything that I think you should know from this section. So this example I actually took from the textbook. Uh, is, so it's number four, page 176. And it gives you a function and asks you to do several things with it, all of which are based off of the definitions that you should have read about in the uh, section. So the first question or the first thing we're supposed to find says, find the average rate of change of f of x if x changes from 2 to 5. So we have an increase in x and we want to know on average how much does f of x change. Does it increase? Does it decrease? And what's the general value? This is a straight formula problem. Average rate of change. You should know the formula. And so you want to memorize the formula. So it's f of a plus h minus f of a over h. And what's going on here is a is the point you start at and a plus h is the point you end at. So in this case, this is a and this is a plus h. So if you think about that, we went from 2 to 5, so that means that h is the difference between them, and so h is 3. Now I just plug these values in, and I'll get uh, a number, and I'll represent the average amount that f of x changed when x changed by 3. So this will be f, x, a plus h, remember, is your larger value, so it's, uh, in this case, 5, f of 5, minus f of, and then that's a smaller value, 2, and then h is the difference between the two x values, so in this case, it's 3. Now, f is the function up here, so i got to plug the 5 in. And so this is going to be 3 times 5 squared. And same thing here, f of 2, i got to plug 2 into the function, so minus 3 times 2 squared. And then I divide by 3. Before I do anything, notice that there's 3 here, there's a 3 here. This is a factor. I could actually rewrite this as 3 times 5 squared minus 2 squared over 3 and cancel it. This may seem like overkill. I could have just put it in the calculator, but we'll need that skill later on. So finally I get 25 for 5 squared minus 4. I get a final value of 21. So you can think of this in terms of units. So x went from 2 to 5, so x increased by 3 units, and when that happened on average, f of x increased by 21 units. Again, it's an average rate of change because at each different point there's a slightly different rate of change. Now the next question asks, find the slope of the secant line through the points 2, f of 2. f of 2 is just what number you would get if you plugged in 2 into the function. And 5, f of 5 on the graph of y equals f of x. Now the secant line is actually a point, or excuse me, a line going through those two points. So if we had our graph, it would actually be pretty easy to draw. So this is some kind of parabola, right? And so if you can imagine we have two points like this. Well, this isn't exactly what the ones we have. So the secant line is actually a line connecting these two points as best as I can draw a line. And so we're actually finding the slope of that line with this formula. Now what's pretty nice is that we have already found this value. The slope of the secant line is the same thing as the average rate of change. Slope of the secant line, same thing. So this is still f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h. And notice the values. This is our x value. x went from 2 to 5. You guys, you guys remember that, I hope, from two seconds ago. We just did that, 2 to 5. So this is actually still f of 5 minus f of 2 divided by 3, which we just found a minute ago. So we found this value was 21. And actually, you didn't have to show anything here. If you were doing this problem, you'd just say, oh, this is the exact same thing as what I just found. Slope of the secant line is the same as the average rate of change. The only thing is if the points had changed, if instead of 2 to 5, it was like 6 to 9, then we would have to do the formula again, but it would still be the same formula. All right, the next question is a slight change. Notice we start at the same x. It's still saying slope of the secant line, so you still know that you're talking about an average rate of change formula. But now you go from x equals 2 to x equals 2 plus h. In other words, we're being asked to find a formula to represent the average rate of change for a general h. So h before was 3. We went from 2 to 5. But what if h was 10 or something like that? Can we make a formula? Now it says h is non-zero. That's because, remember, we divide by h. So it says, and it also says simplify your answer because we're going to, like I said, we're going to end up with a formula. 
But because I'm talking about slope of the secant line, I still start off exactly the same. So it's f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h. In this case, though, I don't know what h is. I'm just given this is my starting point and this is my ending point. So in this case, I have f of 2 plus h minus f of 2. And then I don't know what h is, so I just divide by h. I keep going, though, just like I did with the numbers in the first uh, part a. 2 plus h goes into here, so this is 3 times 2 plus h squared minus, and then I plug in a 2, 3 times 2 squared, then divide by h. But remember, before I could cancel out a 3, but now I can't cancel anything out. And now when I remember when you try to square a binomial, you got to use FOIL. So this is like a 2 plus h. I'm just doing some scratch work up here times 2 plus h. So first would be 4, outer would be 2h, inner would be 2h, and last would be h squared. So here what I actually have is 3 times this thing. So it would be 4 plus 4h, combining like terms, plus h squared. So now I squared that, and then minus... And then this is 4 times 3, so this would be minus 12, all over h. All right now, next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and distribute this 3 and see what comes out. So 3 times 4 is 12, and then 3 times 4 again is 12h, because we have the h there, and then plus 3h squared, and then minus 12, and then over h. Notice that we have a positive 12 and a minus 12, right? So those are gone. And we end up with 12h plus 3h squared over h. Now remember when I did cancel out those 3s, how I factored it out? You can't just cancel if this was the only h. You can only cancel when there's a factor, but here there is. This might not be a step you always write down, but I'm going to write it out so you see what I'm doing. Take out the h there and take out an h here, and I'm left with 12 plus 3h. Now, because it's a factor, I can cancel these, and I'm left finally with 12 plus 3h as my simplified formula for finding an average rate of change if you go from 2 to 2 plus h. All right, so the first few problems we're asking about slope of the secant line and average rate of change. Now we're asked something different. It's still the same point. We're still at 2 f of 2, but now we're asked for the slope of the graph. Slope of the graph is the same as the derivative. We need to find f prime of x, which is the derivative at the point, except this time we're actually finding f prime of 2 because we're finding the slope of the graph at the point x equals 2. So later on that will make a little more sense when we do section 3, 5. So slope of the graph, I need to use the formula for the derivative at a point. So that's the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Notice it's the same thing, except instead of an a, I'm writing an x. I could have written an a. It's the exact same thing. You'll see this definition used a lot. And a lot of times it's with an a, and a lot of other times it's with an x. It doesn't matter which one you're doing. So this is the limit. And now this will be f of 2 plus h minus f of 2 over h. But notice something. This is exactly the same as the average rate of change formula we just found, the slope of the secant line. So the slope of the graph is actually the limit as h goes to 0 of the slope of the secant line. So this is from part c. If you ignore the limit, this is what we just found. So I can actually go back and say, okay, in part c, what did we find this to be equal to? So I'm going to keep my limit, and I'm going to remember what it is, because we're probably pretty close to done. We got 12 plus 3h when we did all that work. And now this is a limit as h goes to 0. It's just a polynomial function, so I can just plug that in. I get 12 plus 3 times 0. Probably would have skipped this step, right? And then I get 12. So the slope of the graph at the point x equals 2 is 12. The limit of the average rate of change formula gives you the derivative formula, which is also used to find the slope of the graph. Now, I put the next two questions on the same slide for a reason, and that's because they're asking for the exact same thing. Instantaneous rate of change 
at x equals 2, the same point we've been working with, and slope with the tangent line at x equals 2. These are all asking for f prime of 2, f prime of 2, which is what we just found from part d. So this answer is going to be 12 that we just found, and this answer is going to be 12 that we just found. You have to be familiar with all these terms. That's the main point of this problem is to recognize what's the same thing and go through that list that I gave you on the summary and that will help you keep track of everything. Now there is one last part and it asks for the equation of the tangent line. So I wanted to go through this because it uses a little bit of algebra that sometimes people forget. We already know the slope of the tangent line because we're still dealing with the point two. So the slope of the tangent line is the derivative there and that would be 12. Now what do you need to find the equation of the line? You need the slope and you need a point. Well the point, a tangent line touches the graph at exactly one point and the tangent line is going to share this point with the function. So our point's going to be 2 comma f of 2. But f of 2 is just 3 times 2 squared. In other words it is 3 times 4 which is 12. So we actually have a point 2 comma 12. So I know that my equation is going to be a y equals mx plus b, and I know it's going to be a y equals 12 because the slope is 12, x plus b. But if I plug in this point that I'm given, I get 12 equals 12 times, and then plug in x, 2 plus b. I'm trying to figure out what b is. So this is 12 equals 24 plus b. Subtract 24 from both sides, I get minus 12 equals b. So combining all this information, I get y equals 12x minus 12. Now this is kind of strange. You don't usually see this value being the same as this value. That just happens to be a coincidence. This could have easily been 10 and this been 12. It doesn't have to be 12 and 12. It just happened to come out that way this time. So don't freak out if you don't see that happen every single time. But otherwise, this essentially is an algebra question because the slope part, that's the calculus, but we already did that. Everything else here is an algebra question. If you can do this problem, then everything else in the section is essentially one of these questions for an individual function. You just have to recognize what the question is asking.